He was a convicted felon who served seven years in prison on federal drug charges. In January, he'll be sworn in as Virginia's Speaker of the House of Delegates, making Portsmouth Delegate Don Scott one of the most powerful people in the Commonwealth. Delegate Scott sat down for a one-on-one -on -one interview with Andy Fox. Andy? And he will also be the first African-American Speaker of the House, which creates a whole new history element right there. Don Scott is 58 years old, a lawyer. He met with us as he prepared for trial. The Don Scott story is a story of redemption, a roller coaster life that finds him now at the top of the ride. In January, he assumes a position that his 88 year old mother, Helen, said was what God meant to be. We interviewed Delegate Don Scott asking him about prison and how far he's come. This prepared me to face adversity, deal with adversity, keep it moving. I don't, you know, that was 30 years ago next year. I know God has an amazing sense of humor. We asked what is at the foundation of his leadership creed with constituents and fellow delegates. A lot of folks really want people to listen to them and have their, their issues heard. Uh, it's not about um, getting what they want all the time. It's more about having access to someone who will listen and address the issues when we can. And I just try to be honest with people about what's doable. There are some who wonder whether Speaker-elect Scott will be fair to Republicans across the aisle. We have been told as minority leader he was tough, argumentative with Republicans. When I was the minority leader, that's my job, to get us from the minority to the majority, which I think I did. And now that I'm the Speaker, it's not, I'm not the Speaker of the Democrats, I'm not the Speaker of the Republicans, I'm the Speaker of the House, which is the people's house. What is his political template on how he will lead? My mantra will be fairness. In inclusivity, making sure that everybody feels heard, Republican and Democrat, um, no matter what your, your political views are. As a sign of good faith cooperation, he kept a Republican appointed clerk of the House, Paul Nardo. We have a lot of Republican leadership that will continue to stay in leadership in the committee assignments that they have and in the, in the positions that they have within the House. And he's been meeting with Republicans to show good faith too. I've met with the Appropriations Chair currently now, Barry Knight, met with him one-on-one. -on -one. I've met with all of those folks. I've met with the governor. So they know what my philosophy is. And regionally, he cares about Hampton Roads, but as Speaker of the House, he has to care about all regions, right? We want to make sure that Hampton Roads does well, Northern Virginia does well, Southside, Southwest. All of the, when we, all of us get together, Central VA, uh, when we all do well, that's why we call the Commonwealth. Now, as a note, I interviewed Don Scott the week before the election, and he predicted the Democrat victory, that Democrats would win 21-19 in the Senate, which was correct, and he predicted Dems would flip the House, which they also did. The Speaker-elect also pointed out it is the first time in about 50 years a sitting governor has lost both chambers, House of Delegates and Senate, to the other party. Tonight at 5, the issues, some easy and some not, that will be on Delegates. Delegate Scott's political agenda. Abortion is front and center. That part of the story at five. I'm Andy Fox, 10 on your side. With Democrats flipping the Virginia House of Delegates in last month's election, there will be a new leader. Lawmakers will vote to confirm Delegate Don Scott of Portsmouth on day one of the 2024 legislative session. And he sat down with 10 on your side's Andy Fox to discuss the issues he'll be tackling, including the future of abortion in Virginia. Andy? Yeah, Tom, Don Scott is the first African-American to serve when he is sworn in as Speaker of the House. And in the House gallery will be Delegate Scott's 88-year-old mother, Helen, who said his becoming Speaker of the House has to be God's will. Winning his election, though, was easy. The tough part now is to govern. As they say, some of my best friends are Republicans. Speaker-elect and House Delegate Don Scott told us his life is no longer his own. Everyone tugs on him. One day you may have a vice president of the United States call you. The next day you may have a congressperson, the United States senator, the governor, uh, all of the members on both sides of the aisle who are contacting me to make sure that they get some of their priorities. With Democrats controlling both House and Senate, Democrats will push to legally enshrine abortion. And you want to enshrine that. What does that mean to enshrine? That means put it in our Constitution. Make sure that it's followed. It will not happen overnight, but Scott says it will happen. And some issues will be easy with built-in political coalitions. I think the number one thing that we can have bipartisanship on is making sure that we deal with our opioid addiction, uh, substance abuse disorder issue in, in the Commonwealth of Virginia. That we can also agree on making sure that we pay our teachers. 
Uh, we pay our teachers below the national average. It's partisan to say that every child should have access to a first class public school education. Those things are mainstream. When the, Some folks think that's partisan, but that's the only thing that we stay focused on, and I think that's why we were elected. We asked how partisan will he be? I don't think it's partisan to say that we want to make sure that we address our gun violence epidemic here in, in the country and in the Commonwealth. I don't think it's partisan to say that we're going to trust women to have bodily autonomy. I don't think it's partisan to say that we need to have a minimum wage that treats everybody with dignity. And Delegate Scott cares a lot about mental health, the root of a lot of evil. And coming up tonight at 6, there is no question that Don Scott's story of redemption is remarkable. 30 years ago next year, he was arrested on federal drug charges and would serve seven years in prison. And next month, he becomes the first African-American Speaker of Virginia's House of Delegates. That part of the story at 6. I'm Andy Fox, 10 on your side. On January 10th, a Portsmouth delegate, Don Scott, will be sworn in as the first African-American speaker of the Virginia House of Delegates. The 58-year-old lawmaker is making history and spoke about, about that when he sat down with 10 on your side's Andy Fox. Andy? Yeah, Tom, speaker to be. Don Scott. We had an extensive interview at four. We spoke to him about what type of a leader he will be working with Republicans. At five, the issues that he thinks most important, including protecting a woman's right to choose. And now in this report, how far he's come from being a convicted felon and in prison to one of the most powerful people in Virginia. 30 years ago next year, Don Scott was arrested on federal drug charges, served seven years in prison. This prepared me to face adversity, deal with adversity, keep it moving. I don't even, you know, that was 30 years ago next year. I know God has an amazing sense of humor. I don't even recognize that person uh, or those times. In January, he will be sworn in as the first African-American Speaker of the House of Delegates. What a long way he's come. So I'm the speaker who happens to be black, and my job is to be smart, be competent, be fair, and be efficient, and that's what I'll do. Here's a picture of two men who made history. Scott with Doug Wilder, former governor of Virginia, and the first African-American governor of a U.S. state since Reconstruction. His mother, Helen, 88, will be in the chamber to watch her son sworn in. I still remember that she said it would have been um, against the laws of God if you had not done what you're doing now. This was meant to be. When it was determined Scott would become the speaker, his mother told him this. The first thing she told me that night, don't get too big for your britches. That's the first thing she <laughs> told me. Scott has dedicated himself to remember those who came before him, the ones he calls the ghosts. I see those ghosts who were serving people, emptying spittoons and emptying urine in that place. It had no dignity, who were having their lives and their futures decided by people in that room who didn't view them as human. And now I get to come in, so I know I stand on the shoulders of all of those people's hopes and dreams, and I'm not going to let them down. Scott says he wants to be a speaker that transcends speakers, to do more to bring people together. We need to bring people back out again. We need to create a sense of community again. And I don't think that's a Republican or Democratic issue. I think that's something that we can all agree on that we need to work on. He doesn't want to get bogged down in politics, but does want to impress. Just a signal to folks that this is not about payback. This is about competence and expertise. And if you can do the job, you'll be able to do the job. Don Scott, the speaker to be. We are posting all three of these very different reports on Delegate Don Scott, the first African-American speaker of the House, and posting them online at wavy.com. I'm Andy Fox, 10 on your side.